let's all welcome uh, my good friend Adam Malone to the podcast for the first time. Definitely. No, just talk. Yep, you got cameras right over there. Oh. You can just... Hi, hello. Hello. Yeah, just act normal, act natural. Like, All right, I can do that. Just pretend you're just having a conversation with me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Hey, everyone. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to thank you for letting us borrow uh, or have some Soylent that we, uh, me and Yuri oh, yeah. had a great time trying. It was really good. Well, you know, it was it was fine. Yeah. But it was great of you to let us Actually, have some. I haven't... That's the only... The only servings of that that have been consumed. I've not had any myself, so... You didn't try it? No, I didn't try it. You've never even tried it? Only on your old... You guys only did it on the so, podcast. So you just have... You just gave me and Yuri some of Yeah, you know, I just kind of... It just... I saw you on the podcast and it seemed a little gross. I mean, I don't know. Usually eating just so seems you just, better in the morning. Now you just got it. I'll have it. In a, in a pinch, it might come in handy Maybe one day you'll go on a road trip or something and... Yeah, maybe. Maybe one, you can have like a... Like a a party of the future where any every drink has to be silent. Oof. And you can put booze in it, but that's like you're in the future, everybody dresses mm-hmm. in tinfoil. Good New Year, New Year concept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Well, speaking about the future in tinfoil, mm-hmm. why don't we talk about uh, the Orion situation? Yeah, so uh, space is a subject that I find very interesting and passionate about. Uh, the NASA just launched a test of the new Orion crew capsule. It was launched and did two orbits of the Earth and uh, was successfully recovered in the Pacific Ocean. Eventually, this will be the craft that carries humans uh, to the moon, back to the moon, and uh, part of a manned mission to Mars. Um, So yeah, I think that's really cool. It's been a long time since the space shuttle's been retired for years, so America's had no way to get humans into space except renting a ride on Russian crafts. So I think this is important. I'm a big fan of space. I want to know what you think. So what... It's a whole new craft. Yes. And it's not the space shuttle. Correct. The space shuttle is retired. It's Why can't they do the space shuttle? Uh, it what was, does it mean that it's retired? Like it's in a garage? Yeah. They don't maintain it. They don't fix it. They're not launching them. They're not training people to operate Why? them. It's retired. Uh, Bad design? One big reason was it was much more expensive than they thought. To um, maintain it? They, yeah. They thought it was... A reusable thing would be very good to have, but I think it would kind of... Uh, was below expectations in that department. So they, way more expensive. So they thought starting from scratch was a better way to go. Apparently, yeah. Space Shuttle couldn't take us to Moon in that far. Apparently, mm. it's designed just to go into orbit and then come back. So they, okay, so that's sweet. So mm-hmm. uh, it did a test flight. It worked. Now they got to just get a crew together to go to Mars. Yeah. Well, the next the next step, they're not even launching another one of these for another like two or three years. So it's a long time until they're doing that, and that one's not even going to be a manned. This is interesting though. There, I was reading on the website. Their first plan, they're going to send out a probe, to t- a robotic craft, to tug an asteroid into orbit of the moon, and then send humans to that asteroid to land on it there. That's the plan. Like, that's in the budget. That's in the NASA budget for... Going to go get... It. What's... <clears throat> why do they get an asteroid? Why? They want to study it because uh, they think it will um, tell us a lot of clues about the early formation of the solar system. Huh. We ever go on the dark side of the moon? No humans have, no. Why don't we do that? Probes have. Uh, I don't know. It's boring. Probably kind of dangerous. Can't communicate, no radio communication with Earth when you're there. So, okay. So if they get an asteroid and get it to orbit around the moon, they got to only be on it when it's on the light side? Oh, they can handle a whole orbit, probably. They'll just go. Or maybe they'll have another satellite that orbits it. Interesting. So, more the deeper question, do you think it's worth spending money to go to space, to send people to space or not? Mm. Uh, Yeah. I definitely do. I, I do. I do because we need to get a, uh, we need to lay the tracks mm-hmm. to get, to make, make it profitable. Mm-hmm. You know, right now it's obviously not at all profitable in any way, but that's when, when it's the government's responsibility to do it. You know, they got to like make room in their budget to like waste a bunch of money and resources to get to space. But then once they lay the groundwork, they can start renting out, like, let's say we make, you know, they can start renting out the ability to take other people up there and do mm-hmm. all that. And then, you know, there's going to be a first Starbucks to the moon and, you know, this the Virgin sh- shuttle that takes you to the moon and tours around the moon and all that stuff will be commonplace. And then once there's money in it, then we can really start getting serious mm-hmm. and get the whole space thing on the road. Because it's not going to be governments that make space happen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They're going to make it start, but then it's going to be companies that, like, see the tourism benefit and yep. put a museum on the moon and show, like, the first flag and the first helmet, like, the moon museum. That'd be fucking sweet. Mm-hmm. And then going to, you know, other planets <clears> for sure. <throat> So you got to corporatize that whole thing and make it profitable. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm for. I think I'm for it. For one, it's interesting and it's knowledge and learning, but also practically, I think that uh, 
the future of the human race has to be to expand and go elsewhere <laughs> off Earth. I mean, the best case scenario for humans is that the Earth doesn't get hit by a meteor, or we don't have a giant nuclear war, or some big famine plague or something. So, like... We gotta get off here. Everyone's on Earth. We gotta live on the moon and live on Mars and all sorts of places. All the eggs are on one basket. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's dangerous. And even, yeah, I mean, it's meteors. I guess we're really lucky to not have been hit by one. You know? Well, it's... Well, we have been hit by them. We have been hit by our, them. Not in our short window. Kind of have that one in Russia that, that like, blew... You saw those videos where all the windows cracked? Like, it, yeah. it didn't kill anyone, but it's... Yeah, I mean, that's, like, nothing compared to a real impact. Yeah, pretty much. They, this, uh, you know, Rogan talks about... He had that, like geologist on one day this is a long time ago but he talked about it like how there you know actually have been a lot of not a lot but you know three or four big impacts the one that's suspected to kill the dinosaurs and then there's some other ones in the ocean that we you know there's big giant craters mm-hmm. that are like planet changing meteorites that like would easily destroy our life minus, minus like cockroaches and shit mm-hmm. and they hit earth you know we just our our like scope is so small compared to you know mm-hmm. earth's time frame that you know if a meteor hits earth every eighty five thousand years that's a lot you know, we will probably not see one for a long time, but yeah. that hits the earth a lot. So if we get on the wrong clock, we'll, uh, mm-hmm. we got to get off. Yep. I think so too. We got to plant some seeds. And plus I want, I really want to go to space and float around in orbit. Like, I think I that would wanna, be I just, just wanna float around, so man. dang fun. I mean, it would be like a, like so a, cool. imagine like going on a, on a camping trip just in space. <laughs> like you just <laughs> go and just float. You get just your TV a, you're not up. even in a ship or anything? You no, know, you're like, just straight up floating. In a that little, would like, be really cool. I mean, you're like in a van, like you you take a ship there, mm-hmm. but then you take your ship and you just jetpack away like mm-hmm. a good mile. And the ship you can see in the distance, but you're just in space with a little, little TV floating and you can just watch it. You can like start a little, I don't know. You space eat. campfire? Yeah, whatever. Whatever you do. Just have a little fun. Put it, wrap up in a sleeping bag and tether yourself somehow to... That'd be terrifying and fun at the yeah, same time. Yeah, great. Yeah. You just feel like you're falling in every direction at the same time. Just blackness everywhere. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You see, I can't um, even imagine. What's that movie? Not not Interstellar. The other movie with Sandra Bullock. Gravity. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, I liked it to a point. You didn't like you, it a lot. The end got too. It got too Meta- dra- metaphysical. Too, no, no, not at all. Not that movie. The end got too. Uh, it got too dramatic. Like hmm? just all these. She just kept having to run away from all these. Oh, like too things. much shit happened. Yeah, just like I mean, I like the. I like the atmosphere and the that's feeling what when she, too, when she like, was kind of floating in space. Like, that was creepy and she had to do this, but then, like, it just turned into a, a regular movie where she's running away from c- calamity. Yeah, I mean, but that's that's how you make a movie, I guess, you know? You yeah. had to have the, the... The engine is... It's an action, like, survival yeah. movie. It just... It let me down. The beginning, I thought, really put me in a mood and I was very engaged. How would you have end. redone it if you could do it? I Boy, I don't know. Maybe... Just I'm have less sure. stuff happen. Just I have like, her deal with the first disaster. I, mean, I, like, I like boring movies, so... Yeah, I could see, like, if she would just had to deal with the first disaster. Yeah. Like, for a long time. You know, and not deal with several disasters. Mm-hmm. They could have made a movie around that, like... Yeah, she could have had know. to... Like, oh, the oxygen's low, or, something. or like, there's yeah. something on the outside that's got to be taken off, or, yeah. you know, whatever. But I like, I like the whole, uh, you know, Clooney comes back in her mind. Mm-hmm. I like I like that piece. Because mm-hmm. it kind of goes with, like, she's not, it's not just, like, this movie thing, but she's also running out of oxygen, so she's definitely hallucinating. Mm-hmm. I like that it's, it makes more sense there. Yeah. Like, it's a dream. I also liked, I liked how she made some mistakes. Like, I remember she lost a tool one time. I just like how she kind of, I feel like usually main characters in movies, they do everything perfect mm. it's unbelievable but I remember a few times she kind of messed something up and it made me really believe it yeah you know because like I don't you know, everyone's gonna that. everyone's gonna mess something up I, I like how that I that, like that I do agree that's a good feeling so let's talk about Interstellar uh, my boy Yuri just refuses to watch it even though he told me he's excited he told me he's gonna watch it he let me down three weeks in a row will not watch it uh, is he scared uh, I don't know what, what his problem is about watching it but okay. I came in I came out of it loving it then I slowly my like little uh Odometer for liking it just went off the rails. I hate it now. I hate that movie. It sucks. How right. do you feel about it? Uh, I thought it was pretty fine. I'd say I wouldn't say I loved it. I was entertained. Special effects were good. I thought the science was good. Yep. Usually, nothing that I was like scoffed at. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What did you hate about it? Well, okay. What I hate about it? Well, okay. I hate a couple things about it. The whole ending pissed me off a lot that he just, like, got out. Like, he got sucked into a black hole, <laughs> and he made it out. Yeah. Like, where's the science there? You know, I mean, I get, like, uh-huh. okay, let's say there's five-dimensional creatures that are, like, what, caressing him into the black hole. They put him in the center of it where there's, like, the special room they made just for him. Well, yeah, but they were... It was humans who made that. See, now, this is something you told me. 
Yeah, that's how I interpreted this movie. I never got that. Mm-hmm. I got there was different beings that live on a five-dimensional plane. You're saying the humans are those beings. Yeah, well, that's they thought it was aliens, but then as soon as he sent that message of how to solve gravity or whatever, yeah, then they, they understood enough, so I guess they could just quick whip up this five-dimensional time-traveling thing. Who did, though? Humans, like the people back on Earth, his daughter, and all those other stuff. But they didn't make the five-dimensional room. I, th- I, think th- I think that's what they say happened. Yeah. And who says it? Uh, in when when uh, what's his name McConaughey? Yeah. When he's talking to that robot in the big bookshelf. He says it was us. It was us. Yeah, he figures that out. He, he says, says this was us. This See, was I don't, us. bullshit that he says that. I don't care. I don't believe it. That doesn't make sense. We're not five dimensional beings. You know, it's bullshit. No, but we. But with the information that he sent back to those people, they had. That's what they needed to understand. So how it's to like manipulate all the dimensions. So it's a classic grandfather paradox where yeah, we totally, only figure totally. that out because he used the tools they made to yes make the tools they made. Yeah. See, we got into this when I saw this movie with my girlfriend Yolanda, and uh, afterwards we were talking about this grandfather paradox where it's like, wait, what happened here? I mean, it doesn't like you can't really make it make sense. Yeah, I hate that. Well, I mean, I didn't even see it that way. I thought, okay, there's different aliens that are taking care of us, and they are doing it, which, let's let's just go with that, because the, the grandfather paradox thing is too annoying. Mm-hmm. But here's what it pissed me off. So, here's the, they, they, have, they did a great job setting this setting, where Earth is falling apart, the farmers can't farm anymore, uh, we're trying to, like, hunker down and get our shit together. NASA's, like, completely underground, mm-hmm. this, like, bootstrap operation that's barely scraping by, trying to, like, save humanity. Mm-hmm. They don't have any fucking money. They don't have any funding, you know? They're, this guy's trying to solve this equation he's been trying to solve forever. Uh, so then they send McConaughey in. He figures out how to solve the equation, okay? The key to make the equation happen. The equation which will allow us to do something with gravity that'll let us take a lot of people off Earth. That's, like, what the equation's gonna solve. Yeah. To send a manned mission through the wormhole. That's what they couldn't do. No, 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 no. They could yeah. do that. They did do that. No. They, well, they sent one guy. They couldn't send all oh, of yeah, them. everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They sent a seed, but they uh-huh. wanted to, you wanted to bring the whole population in. Yeah. So the equation wouldn't allow that. So he solves the equation. He communicates that equation solution back. Mm-hmm. Then his daughter ends up solving the equation. Mm-hmm. And then he flashes forward, what, 35 years? Mm-hmm. And he ends up at Saturn, where there's now a space station the humans built in 30 mm-hmm. years around the black around the wormhole. So okay, so they solve the equation, and then automatically they have like infinite money and infinite resources to go build a space station outside of Saturn. Like fuck off. Yeah, but they could. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe not. But uh, everyone, the entire planet was dying. Like yeah, but you, that, you, it's it's believable that they would pool all the resources if I, they had a reason. I way. find that horribly unbelievable. Because it'd be like some crackpot comes up. It's like I fixed the equation. Give me all the money in the planet. Right, but what if she made? What if she actually made a ship that can hover? And she's like, "Look, like this works. Let's go send everyone to Saturn." Uh, that part seems. Okay. I agree. Maybe it's a little aggressive, but like the whole planet is dying. So like, what else were people gonna do? Are they gonna like? Well, I mean, not. All, I mean, in my in my opinion, when they're like the whole reason that NASA is not funded and nobody cares about space exploration now is because they're like, we need to take care of our own before we start. On these flights yeah. of fancy in space. <clears throat> so to a regular person who's not an astrophysicist, you're like, I solved the equation of gravity. I can save the whole planet. He's like, get the fuck out of here. I need to save my potatoes. You know what I mean? He's not... Like, like no one's going to buy the equation and, like, just commit. You know? Like, it's... it's. I don't. I find that the least <clears throat> believable part. I'd rather it be, like, a long-term plan. Not, like, in 30 years. I wanted, like, a 300-year plan. You know what I mean? Like, Earth barely makes it. We barely get off. It's I want to find that more believable. It's not much of a criticism. That's really kind of a... Not much. I don't think so. Saying that I don't think hmm. in 30 years they couldn't... When the they, planet's they dying, s- they couldn't... It's not plausible they took, that they could send everyone off. Like, they took pains. They took pains to, to narrate, not even show, but specifically say that people don't care for space exploration at NASA at this point because they want to take care of Earth first because they're all dying now. They said they like pointed that out not only visually in that NASA's like underground and nobody knows what knows about it, but they've said that like with the words. So I mean, like, I just find it unbelievable that in thirty years they could get it all turned around and turn the whole human race around. You know, in one lifetime, I don't like that. Second complaint, give that a, give that a break. The ship they make at first is kind of like okay, which one? The one they travel McConaughey travels on the wormhole, or no, the the other ship that they travel on planets with. They never showed that. No, the little yeah, the ship they went to the water planet on the shuttlecraft. Oh yeah, that thing. The most amazing shuttlecraft in the world. Yeah. Who could just who can fly in space, land on a planet, and then take off from a planet back into space? Yeah. Like that's that, that's like a Star Trek style shuttlecraft. Mm-hmm. Like it can do anything. Mm-hmm. It's like what the, 
where did that tech come from? It's insane. Like when they mm-hmm. first took off, that was like a, a traditional yeah, spacecraft. Yeah, rocket. They did, did, yeah. did shot shit off and had to leave the atmosphere, yeah. and then they could just go on this planet, which has two times the Earth's gravity. They said that with these ridiculous waves, and it just lands on that, no problem. Mm-hmm. And they could take back off from that. What the hell? Yeah. And they kind of went from like a realistic, like scrap together an, a operation to just cut yeah, to, to magic. We're yeah. now in Star Star Trek, and yeah. we can do whatever we want. I agree with you there. And we can go into black holes and get real close and escape black holes. Pull. It's like what the hell's going on? They made us. Mm-hmm. They made this shuttlecraft like such magic. Mm-hmm. They jumped a shark in that part. Part the whole. Like, once they started doing that, it's like okay, now this is just complete sci-fi, and now more real. Like, you know, not like hard sci-fi, but like yeah, I'm with super whimsy sci-fi. Yeah, I'm with you on that shuttle. Yeah, I don't like that. Shuttle was too good. One little correction, it was the robot who solved the equation. Because he got shot into that black hole, and then he just told McConaughey how to type it in Morse code. Yeah, okay, the robot solved it. Yeah, the robot solved it. But then he he, he Morse coded it to his girl. Yes, which apparently is... Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't know, the movie was fine. I liked it the first time I saw it, but now I just really kind of go... I just wish he died at the end. That's really what what I want. I want him to die, and I don't want him to show what happened to the humans. I mm-hmm. would be a much better movie to me. Like, he got the thing back. Mm-hmm. It shows her solving the equation. Like, she puts the last number into the X, yeah. and it's like it pans out, and she's like feeling like she did it, and then it's just fucking roll credits, man. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let us figure out on our own. Mm-hmm. You know, McConaughey doesn't make it. Like, what, what bullshit is that? Like, he went to a black hole. His last gasp, okay? Maybe the whole, maybe the whole, the whole like, thing was in his mind. It was some kind of metaphysical thing where... <laughs> The five-dimensional beings or humans in the future, they tapped into his brain and used this, you know, some magic bullshit, but his body's gone. Like, he's mm-hmm. dust. Mm-hmm. Leave it. Don't make him come back, like, exactly in the right spot, too. Like, oh, he's right in front of the spaceship, but, like, what the fuck? It's so, like, fairy tale. It's stupid. Like, the movie starts realistic, ends in a fairy tale. Yeah, it was real Hollywood. So that pissed me off. Hollywood. It could have been a good ending. could have been a, a better movie. Mm-hmm. They botched it. It was, mm-hmm. a, it was a squandered opportunity. That black hole, on the other hand, was the coolest thing I ever saw. Black hole is very cool. That whole, like weirdness to it mm-hmm. and there's a documentary on YouTube like look up like you know inner sort of black hole documentary the community mm-hmm. they talk about why they made it that way and like all the math that went into like mm-hmm. if there was a black hole that wouldn't light, light escape what the event horizon would look like and how why it's like vertical and horizontal at the same time and mm-hmm. the whole thing I, I loved it I watched it it was like, it was like 15 minutes cool. I recommend it cool so tell us what you think about Interstellar oh spoiler alert I guess we spoiled it. <laughs> we spoiled pretty much everything in the entire so, movie. Sorry I about think, that. I think it was fine. I, it's, uh, it's fine. They could have. They yeah, would have I caught mean, it before we got too deep. Yeah. And if we didn't, why don't you tell me? Oh, I'll fuck myself in the Plus, comments. It came out like what a month and a half ago. It's I mean, old enough. Look, if you wanted to see, if you if you're not Yuri, then you would have seen it already. And if you're Yuri and you're watching this video, tough shit, pal. <laughs> now you don't. I save you the trouble. You know what I mean? It's a bad <laughs> movie anyway. Yeah. Uh, so let's just uh, change gears completely. Let's. You know what? Let's have a little toast to the opposite of a segue. A complete. <clears throat> complete just pivot. a sharp horrible transition horrible U-turn awful this is a complaint you have for, yeah. for a lifetime yeah big time so here's what I hate every store I feel like I go into and make a purchase any real store I am without a doubt asked if I'm a member of their if I have a membership if I have their rewards card and it's on, it's on a it's on a different level. I'll put them all on a spectrum. It seem I'm I seriously think that about every store has to ask if you're a member, and they all have a rewards card. So I guess the best case is if they don't ask me that, if they just say have a nice day, or God forbid a little chit chat or something that like a human would do when they're talking to someone. But no, they're forced to say, are you a member? I say no. That's great if they leave it at that. Sometimes they they're forced to sell it. They say, well, are you interested in becoming a member today? I say, no, I, I don't think so today. If they leave it at that, then I'm a little more annoyed, but okay. it's it's fine. But sometimes they're like, well, do you know what the benefits of membership? Do you, did you know that on today's purchase, you can save 20%? No, please and don't on, tell me. Yeah, and on future ones, and I say, no, I'm, I'm not interested in becoming a member. Usually they leave it. I've never actually been sold harder than that, except at, uh, it was at REI, REI, which is a, uh, like a, camping goods kind of store I wasn't even checking I'm always they always really hard sell their membership there um, but I was actually approached while browsing things someone asked me if I'm a member say no and they like it was really it was very annoying um, I hate it I don't become a member out of spite partially out of spite partially because I don't want to sign up for some new credit card that can just get breached and like screw me over I feel like it's not worth it um, it's mostly just out of spite it annoys me to constantly be asked um and I just hate it. I feel like it makes my makes the interaction with human beings who are working in the store just 
I feel confrontational because it, I don't know, it just bugs me. I wish they could just not have to sell me. I wish they didn't have those dumb cards. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's definitely annoying. I agree with you. I do have some of them. Uh, you know, I don't think Walmart has one. I don't think they do. I was thinking of what, like, real, like, I was mm-hmm. going to say go to mom and pop stores because mm-hmm. they won't have one. But, like, Walmart doesn't have one of those. And I feel yeah. like they definitely should. Good for them. But good for them, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering when are, and I rue the day, is that the term, when I'm not looking forward to it? I don't think that that's something else. That's when the, a day happened in your past that you hate. Oh, okay. We'll edit that part out so I sound <laughs> smarter. But I, I don't look forward to the day when restaurants get on this. Um, dread the day. I dread the day, yeah. Because, like, I can just totally see some server. and Plus, the server would probably be a pretty decent salesperson. And it would, you know, to ask me if I'm a member of their thing and I can get a tenth meal free or something like that. Like, I don't, I really don't want that. They do that at coffee shops, you know. You, get, <clears> you know, if you can get this punch card and... See, but you, you the, want the it's the credit cards, card that bothers you. Yeah, the punch card. It's kind of a normal coffee shop thing. I've picked those up, and yeah, you're right. Usually, yeah, I guess it's the same. You thing. like the credit cards. The credit cards. I don't are like the credit cards. Well, here's what like, they sell you on this membership, and then they make you pay for it with the credit card that you sign up for right then. Mm-hmm. And then you got to pay that off. So it's like one more bullshit to deal yeah, with. Yeah, this is like the Macy's one. Macy's yeah. heart sells pretty hard. And and Express. It's, it's, it's a credit card. And I ha- I have a TJ Maxx card. I have one. And I use I use it at TJ Maxx. I do because mm-hmm. I go there often enough, and it's close mm-hmm. enough to my house that I actually do it. But yeah, I mean, who I like having only one credit card in my wallet. Mm-hmm. I hate having more than one. Mm-hmm. I hate the fact that I even have to have a Sam's Club card. It's annoying to me. I, look, I don't even I have it right in my desk. I have it here. I don't want to carry it in my wallet. <laughs> if I make a special trip to Sam's Club, I take that one card. You know, I don't want to like carry it all. So then you, I need an Express card and a goddamn Target card and a fucking. Nordstrom's rack card. Mm-hmm. Get out of here. Nobody mm-hmm. wants your card. Mm-hmm. Give me a punch card. I'll be down with that. You buy one pair. You buy ten pairs of shoes. You get a you know eleven free. All right. Yeah. They can probably get you in on just their system. You just like yeah. Like, tell I don't your know. name or something. What do they know. want? What is this credit card? They want your inf- they want your information. I mean, they I'll w- give them my information and not have to pay with the credit card. How about that? Like I don't want to well, use in their some card. cases. I think that is what they want. They want to know. They want to be able to understand your buying habits so they can better shape what they offer and those sort of things. I mean. Another reason is if they're always pushing this, it's obviously good for them. You know what I mean? Of like, course. It's, it's good for them. So I feel like then it's not good for me. So that's another reason I just... Well, that's a weird stance. It what? could be good for both. Could it? Yeah. How? Well, you get 10% off for spending the money yeah. you would have spent anyway, and they get to learn information about you, which they can learn to better market to you. They call it, They consider that good, I guess. Yeah, they consider it good because they get your info. It's good for you because you get 10% off. I mean, it's definitely good for both. It's a pain in your ass up front to deal with. And if they get hacked, it's a huge pain in your ass, yeah. which is a serious concern now. It is. All those guys getting hacked. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a thing. I don't, you know, I don't like it either. I don't like when they, when you obviously don't want to deal with it, they're like, well, you know, it's like, I don't give a fuck how good of a deal it is. Mm-hmm. Get out of my face about it. You're going to tell me like, oh, you, Barnes & Noble is always doing that shit to me too. It's like, Barnes yeah. & Noble, your industry's dead, yeah. man. I'm not buying your card. Yeah. And it's just, me? yeah. And I mean, speaking of the industry, industry's dying, I mean... I like going to, I like paying in real stores and going to real stores even if it's more expensive because I like being able to get something immediately. I mm. like being able to talk to someone who works there because mm. they probably know something about this. And I like being able to look, like physically look at things like uh, music instruments. I love the Guitar Center store because sure. I can actually go try something out. Like I'm willing to pay a little more because I've tried plenty of things out I'm never going to buy. So I like supporting that. But when they bug me about all this shit, like it makes me just not want to go there. I just, just got to buy them lines, and then nobody's ever going to ask me. I know, I know. But, well, well, we're on topic of a yeah. nice segue here. There's a segue. Uh, of of uh, technology changing the way stores work. You know, we all know about, like, how some companies don't catch on to technology, and they they bomb. You know, like, the music industry is an example. They're, they're, we can currently all witness the music industry. You know, I mean, they're, the industry's doing okay, but the record labels are getting tossed because musicians can go direct. Mm-hmm. They can go to Spotify. They don't need a publisher anymore. They don't need to make CDs anymore. You know, and the iTunes is just cutting CD sales. What are those? When's the last time you bought a CD? Never? <laughs> it's been... Uh, sometimes if I see a band and I like them, they usually have a oh, CD. The best then in that case, I will buy Direct it, to band. Sure. Never a... Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I'm not going to Best Buy and go, hey, do you have the latest Katy Perry? Like, I saw that, like, what was her name? What was her name? Taylor Swift. She just released a CD. Uh-huh. And they keep showing, like, the CD she got. I'm like, who's buying that fucking CD? Nobody? <laughs> I bet a lot of people still do, but I mean, it's got to be smaller than. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be iTunes. Fraction. I mean, everyone has an iPhone. Like, you just get. An yeah, iTunes. I mean, I mean, the CD, like the picture, I guess, still like carries weight, like the mm-hmm. picture, but like the disc. Honestly, someone going to Best Buy or where else do you go to get a CD anymore? Mm-hmm. 
disc land? What the f- I don't even know what to even call a disc store anymore. Anyway, so the music industry, they can easily have... They, they fucked it up themselves. They've been mm. doing the wrong thing. They've been punishing people who are interacting with music. They've been suing people for ridiculous amounts. All this, like, you know, trying to fight piracy. And they're just smearing themselves this entire time. Everybody just hates them, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're digging their own grave, okay? Forget them. Uh, let's think about companies that, that just completely got <clears throat> blindsided by technology mm-hmm. and got shut down. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking specifically about camera companies like mm-hmm. Kodak, who are now like, who's buying a Kodak camera? Yeah, cheap cameras. All cheap camera yeah. makers. They're, I mean, they're... photographers, yes. They still want high quality film yeah. cameras for like thousands of dollars. But like, mm-hmm. if you're just like, I want to go on vacation, I'm going to buy a camera. Forget about it. Mm-hmm. Why would you ever buy a camera now? You got a phone. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, it wasn't a competing company that beat them. Mm-hmm. It's a completely new industry that came yeah, was, out of it was, nowhere. It was like a side thought for the smartphone. Yeah, and it just, just put them out of business. And then another example is GPS systems, like yeah, Garmin yeah, and Nuvi yeah. and Magellan's. Like, they're making yeah. GPSs. you got to buy these SD cards to, like, update your maps. And now it's like, oh, Google Maps on your in everybody's mm-hmm. pocket. Hey, Garmin, what are you going to do now? You're going to sell yourself to fucking people who have a phone in their pocket all the time that's better than your system anyway? It was accidentally. They just got buried. Mm-hmm. Now, the question here is, could they have done anything to save themselves? Like, is there anything they could have done? That's what I was... I'm racking my brain going, like, okay, the music industry could have embraced digital downloads. They could have yeah. opened their own store. They could have, like, made it their own Napster, you know, legally and do their whole thing. What could have, like, Garmin done? Yeah, Garmin... To not I, don't, get, I don't see how you possibly could have foreseen that I mean, that made, you made... Do. They could have made the first app that, like, was better than Google Maps. Good That's luck, you know? Pointless, too. And plus, even, I mean, like, the actual... Yeah, they they were screwed. They were beat by Google. Yeah, and Kodak. I was, and, the only thing I thought cameras. with camera, I guess, I suppose maybe they could make the lens and the CCD that would actually go on a phone. Make a lens for the but phone. But I mean, they're making, they're, you know, they're making things, I mean, they have a whole, they're making consumer products. Like, that's not, that's just one company. part of their whole thing they have to do. I mean, yeah, they got. Yeah, like, yeah, they, even for Garmin to make the app, like, they're a hardware company. Like, they can't just make software. They're, they have mm-hmm. the foundation to make <clears throat> products. It's mm-hmm. like Apple going software only. Like, they can't. Yeah. Their whole industry is based on making big machines. Alarm clocks? Probably too. Alarm I would, clocks. I don't have. I don't know for sure, but I would guess alarm. I, I would guess people alarm don't clocks really buy alarm f- clocks at all. Yeah, they're probably. I, I can't like. I never really considered alarm clocks as a brand. Well, ever since, because they've been they've had alarm clocks on a phone ever since this, any cell phones came out. So yeah, it's, it's been kind of a long time. I also can't think of any dedicated alarm clock companies. Like there's Sony that makes clocks. You know, there's like yeah, that's true. GE makes clocks, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you're thinking whole industry. Definitely a dying yeah. like definitely a dying art. But there's just some industries that are you know like mobile devices just killed them. Mm-hmm. And, like, even, I mean, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, like, well, I guess that's not a good example at all. Never mind. I, <laughs> I, I, say I withdraw. I was going to say phone companies. Like, because uh, Google Voice and just, like, is a free phone service. Yeah. And cable companies who, yeah. like, TV, cable TV. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I quit cable. And I don't even know anybody who has it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like, all my friends of, like, say, 20 people that I know, they do not have cable anymore. So, it's like, cable companies are in, in shit city right now. Well, they they actually seem to do a pretty good job because they switched to internet. They're They've been on it. internet, so now they're on now they're on yeah. something people need. But they haven't more. been blindsided, so they can save them. They can save themselves. Yeah. They saw the writing on the wall. Whereas mm-hmm. I think like Kodak and Garmin just got, you know, absolutely yeah. like shanked. What's next? Do you think? For for what? Like, for an uh, industry being destroyed by something that now some kind of new technology can be can just do. I mean, if I could predict that, I could probably make some money somehow. Definitely. I don't know how. We'll talk. Let's talk about this offline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, let's, oh, so let's, okay. So here's a topic I've had for a couple of weeks. I want to talk about celebrity freebies. This concept, if you don't know, is like, you know, you have a girlfriend, you have a wife, you, you often talk about like, well, my one celebrity freebie is Johnny Depp where, you know, like that means that if they ever meet Johnny Depp and have the opportunity to have sex with Johnny Depp mm-hmm. there, it's not considered cheating. It's like a free, I had sex with Johnny Depp mm-hmm. and we're still married. And it's fine. Just mm-hmm. that's my thing, mm-hmm. whatever. So I don't want to talk about the concept. You know, it's a cute game. I want to talk about who yours are, like how and how it's changed over the years. To be honest, I've never actually had this discussion with anybody I've been in a relationship. Never, never, ever. No, it's never. I've heard of other people. Doing Everybody it. has does this. I I know that. You're I, s- I never actually have done it. Um, are you asking who mine would be now? Well, yeah. Who would it be? Like, who's your? You know, it's not like who it, alive or dead has to be alive. Has to be alive. There's yeah. got to be a possibility. 
Uh, what celebrity do you like? Just like you, you love her. You, like if she's in a movie, you're like, I'm gonna go see a movie because I like her. There's nobody who, if they're in a movie, I'm gonna go like see uh, when you were nobody. What about like you know, mother on a, on, a, on a Maxim cover? You're like, I'll check that out. Like, oh, they have an Instagram account. I'll follow that. Maybe there'll be like a beach pic sometime. You know, I'll check that out. Yeah, like a cross celebrity crush. You know, I guess in the past, Lindsay Lohan. I, I thought she her? was pretty hot. Like, yeah, yeah, from the I Mean Girls era. Yeah, but I mean now I'm don't really care. You know who I like from Mean Girls? The, the the gothy girl who was her best friend yeah that's a hot piece of ass right there <laughs> she's uh, in the show Party Down on Netflix you can see and she's in some movies what's her name from uh, The Hunger Games she's pretty hot well Jennifer Lawrence yeah that's my that's my go to okay. right now also do you, that's your go to who, who has it been in the past uh, well Britney Spears Elizabeth Hurley oh yeah love her uh, Melissa Joan Hart wow that's, that must be an old one that's my first back that's my Clarissa Explains It All that's my first one yeah yeah Clarissa Explains It All uh, I like Christina Aguilera as well, but no, during that time it was Britney Spears for sure over Christina, you know. But now Jennifer Lawrence, absolutely. Omila Kunis was one of mine too. Mm-hmm. Got that Russian connection, you know what I mean? She's Russian. Something. Mm. Maybe she's Ukrainian, Russian, something. Yeah, she's Russian, I think. Pretty sure she's Russian. I feel like I would have known that. Would you um, have known that? I follow a celebrity gossip. Like, <laughs> I keep it a secret. But, but yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, I think, is just she's just the greatest person ever. I if love it her. can go I mean, love. alive or dead in their prime. Okay. Claudia Cardinelli. Who the hell is that? She's from she's in this uh movie from like the sixties, Once Upon a Time in the West. She's so hot. I saw this movie in like Once Upon a Time in the West. I think that's what it's called. I mean, what I why is it sound so familiar to me? Maybe you've seen it. Hmm. Yeah, it's really old. It's got the guy playing the harmonica. Like, I don't know. It's really old. I saw this movie and like, one of the biggest celebrity crush I've ever had. And I mean, she's been dead now for like 10, 15 years. That's, but that's, that's in her prime, like, she's pretty weird. Even really hot. Crush. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a weird one. It's weird. That's why I, li- <clears throat> I had to take Elizabeth Hurley off my crush list because she's too old now. Yeah. I don't know how old she is, but she's still fucking hot. Definitely as well. too old. She's so hot still. <laughs> but yeah, she's definitely getting up there in years. No, one more final celebrity freebie question. If the, this actually happened, uh-huh. do you really think that's an excuse? I mean, no way. You know what I mean? Like, you sleep with Jennifer Lawrence, you really think, like, that's going to be okay? I mean, you're going to be in the doghouse just as bad as if it was with someone else. No, because it's like, a, it's like a contract. Like, yeah, I know, but is it really? It's not really a contract. I, I you know, I don't think it would actually... I might have like to just that. take the consequences. Yeah. But Plus, you have, you have all that evidence saying... All the history of like, hey, we talked about this. Yeah, you know? we talked about it. So it's like, that. there's no relationship there. It's like, yeah. it's not even love there. I mean, just like, you know, I had, I had sex with a celebrity. That's yeah, really but you could say doing. that about just some stranger too. You could use that as an excuse for cheating. If yeah, that's what you're saying. you could, but it's it's premeditated. Like, you know, yeah. it's different. Like, you see a girl in the bar and you're like, oh. You, but it's like, I'm premeditating going, I will have sex with Jennifer Lawrence uh-huh. only for mm-hmm. the sheer star value of it. And no other reason. You know, like, it's, it's a premeditated event and it's agreed upon by both parties she can get mad about it after the fact but would you have sex with Steve Buscemi if you could have sex with Jennifer Lawrence <laughs> I know that's a good one <laughs> I love Steve Buscemi <laughs> uh, so I gotta have sex with him and then I First, get to the next day then you get to do this it actually, so you uh, get a full day this is a great question actually <laughs> like you gotta have sex with X and then you gotta have sex with Y <laughs> would you do it or not you can make a chart oh man <laughs> I gotta think on that one for a while I would not I would not that would make me gay, too. Would it? Would it make you gay? For if you're only doing it to, if you're only using it as a hurdle to get to your goal, which is very heterosexual. We've talked about this before in the past, haven't we, too? I don't know. Like, if you have at ever, any time ever, like, had sex with a man, does that mean you're homosexual or not? Nah. I don't think so either. I mean, if, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> All the, all the chime in on the comments all the, all, the, all the gay people listening please uh, please comment in and tell us what you think and definitely give me a tweet or comment in your celebrity uh, freebie We yeah we'd love to hear that one especially from the ladies I want to know who, what, what the hot guys are is it Channing Tatum is that is Johnny Depp still he's getting pretty old too Johnny Depp but for older dudes do fine yeah. if you're an older dude like people still want to fuck Sean Connery and he's a million yeah. George Clooney yeah George yeah. Clooney Johnny Depp even just, Brad, you know, Brad Pitt old, he's, old, yeah. he's an old Old bag now, isn't he? How old is he? Sixty? No, fifty. Late mid fifties. 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 All right. Well, let's take a little break. I'm back. They can actually hear me say the break part, so I always sound weird. It's a different. So, uh, speaking of gays, <laughs> I got one of those rhetorical questions that we've been meaning uh-huh. to do. 
this is by our boy, uh, our boy, whatever Klosterman. I forgot his name. You, I showed you some of these at work. You know, yes, those rhetorical yes. questions. Mm-hmm. You already knows this guy from a while ago. But here's one of his questions we're going to discuss. Okay, I'm going to read it now. A novel titled Interior Mirror is released to mammoth commercial success despite middling reviews. I love that touch. <laughs> middling reviews. However, a curious social trend emerges. Though no one can prove a direct scientific link, it appears that almost 30% of people who read this book immediately become homosexual. Many of these newfound homosexuals credit the book for helping them reach this conclusion about their orientation, despite the fact that Interior Mirror is ostensibly a crime novel with no homoerotic content and was written by a straight man. Okay, where's the question? The question is, would you read it? Yeah. You, you wouldn't, you've never read it, now would you read it? Yeah. Even though there's a 30% chance it might possibly turn you gay for no reason? Yeah, that's fine. If I turn gay, then I'd want to be gay. Probably. That was the way Lord, the Lord intended it? Well, something like that. I mean, for those of you who don't know me, just so you know, I'm a raging heterosexual in all ways. <laughs> but yeah, I'd read it. I mean, sure. For one, it's intriguing. Mm, yeah. I'd be completely fascinated if it actually, if I did turn gay after reading it. Um, and if I did, then I'd probably want to be gay. So then, fine. But you don't want to be gay now? No, not particularly. Let's say there's a chance this book would make you gay, like legitimately. Mm-hmm. Not not even like dis- have you discovered that you're gay, but like you would just, you would all of a sudden be gay. Would that be... Wouldn't that be weird for your... Like, if you never read the book, you just go on living your life now. It, it's pretty weird, yeah. I mean, it's I'd for sure weird, but I would, would you... I uh, still read it, yeah. Really? Yes. I had to think long and hard about this. Because it would fuck up my whole relationship. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, I just got yeah, married. Right. Yeah, you know, right. like, all of a sudden mm-hmm. I'm gay. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm pretty deep into this heterosexual life I've built, and it's not fake. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty deep in. Now, all of a sudden, like, I read a book, and I flip the switch, and I'm like, I become gay. Even as a 30... I'm curious as hell about this book, right? Hmm. 30% chance to fuck my life up though you know hmm. if I was like a single college guy and read it maybe I'd be gay and that's fine yeah but that's not where I'm at in my life right now I can't take that risk think your parents too think of my parents they would not be okay just tell them you read the book have your parents read it <laughs> maybe a good prank to pull them trick your, give it I give it to my dad for Christmas <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be like how funny of a prank would that be if you turned somebody gay who didn't like want to be gay and you gave him, and you gave him that book and then, like, all of a sudden, like, three months after you read the book, he's with a, you know, he comes out as gay, mm-hmm. he's a male partner, and then you show him why you, like, you did this, and that's why he's gay now? That's a fucked up prank. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird as fuck. I know someone we could get with that one. Oh, I know what you're talking about <laughs> there. So, yeah, uh, that's a good question. In the comments, please tell us what you think about that. I think that's, uh... Would you read the book? Would you read the book is the question. The, I mean, the book's not about any kind of, it's not a, it's not a weird book, it's normal, but it just has this hmm. weird phenomena. It's a weird question. Very weird. I'm very curious about the book, but... Where did you get these... Where are all these questions from? Uh, well, originally, the guy wrote a book called Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. And I never read the book. This is what Yuri found him. And in the book, there's a series of 23 questions he always has to ask someone before he has a relationship with them. And they're just... This is one? This is one of those. There's a bunch of questions like this. They're all weird. And uh, then also, a person at work has a de- like a deck of cards that just mm-hmm. have a, like 50... 60 of these questions on the cards. Same author? Same author. Different questions. Okay. And they asked those weird ones. Like last time we asked, mm-hmm. we asked when Yuri was here about that one guy who uh, murdered his friend. Yeah, the murder kid. situation. Yeah. yeah, we talked about that. He's another question which I find really interesting. Oh, we'll say it. Why not? He's got so many. It says you, you meet a street magician on the street. Like just a magician. Who claims he can make people look better. Like he can make you more handsome. It's not a physical change. You can't see it. You'll just uh, come off more handsome to other people. Mm-hmm. And you can do it in, a, in, a, in a, like a, a range of how much you can do it. And, it'll, and it tells you, it goes, look at that guy over there. And you look at him. And he says, watch. And it'll make him just a little bit better looking. And you look at the guy and nothing changed about him. And you go, that is a handsome, a more handsome looking man than like two seconds ago. Hmm. He just, there's something he did about it. Make him like a, make him an aura of good lookingness. So the question then is, he'll make you more handsome based on how much money you give him. <laughs> how much money do you give him right there in that street? Oh. That's the question. Uh, 20 bucks, $500. He's he's going to demonstrate this to me? No. He demonstrated to you that he definitely has a power that works. So he did it to some random guy? He did, he did like a little bit of more handsomeness and to I some believe guy. Him? Okay. And you, and it definitely can I ask worked. him how much money worth of handsomeness that was? Or not? Uh, yeah, sure you can. And he'll tell you. That was you know, 25 I'd, bucks. I'd go from there. I mean, I'd maximum... Everything he had on you at the time? He takes only cash. Maximum 100 bucks. 100 bucks max? Yeah. It depends, you know, I was thinking about this, when I first heard this question about, Yuri told me this about six, seven years, no, this is in high, in college, 
2005. You already told me about this guy. This guy. So at that time, I'm like, this question to me, I would give him like thousand dollars, like all my money. You know, I give him all my money at the time. You said at the time, yeah. Now I give him maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah. I'm already done. I'm, I'm married. I'm done. You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. even worry about that shit anymore. Mm-hmm. Back when I was in college, I had to like be looking at my best all the time, picking up chicks, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm all I'm all settled in. I, I can save that money for like you know diapers and shit. My, perspe- <laughs> my perspective is all different now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, being handsome is definitely an advantage, but yes. I'm over it. I've already yeah. succeeded. Yeah, I see what I'm you done mean. with that. I got my yeah. girl. I'm married. It's over. Mm-hmm. What's the point of me being five hundred dollars more handsome now? Not much, really. Not really, you know. So. It's weird how, it, what stage of life you're in. So if you would comment and answer this question and tell us what stage of life you're in, because I'm curious how that affects your answer. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a, I think it's considerable. Yeah. All right. Which one of these topics do you want to deal with? We got three. <clears throat> which one mm-hmm. do you like best? Um, you, why don't you pick your favorite? I get to pick. Well, let's do uh, Christmas gift ideas. Christmas is coming up. Um, I don't have any ideas. I can't really contribute to this. Christmas is coming. Oh, actually, I do got one. You start, though. <clears throat> oh, I don't have anything. I mean... You got none either? So we're sitting well, here saying we got say, no ideas? I don't this say is, I have... This is what I feel like going shopping. No, I have some, but you were about to say something. Yeah, like this was uh, stolen from a coworker actually. Um, a coworker who has kids. This is brilliant. I don't have kids myself, but if you have kids, get them restaurant gift cards for their favorite restaurant. Because then they'll be really excited, and then they get to decide like when they go to the restaurant. They'll feel like they're actually getting it. But really, if you're the parent and you're paying for their food anyways, like you're basically just giving them a free gift. Like you're kind of cheating them out of a gift in some way. But also, they'll be happy. It's kind of a win-win for both of you. I thought that was just an absolutely brilliant idea and one I will do for my kids when I have. So them. You, your kids love noodles. Yeah, you get them. A, you, you give know, them a twenty-five dollar noodle gift card. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, great! Like, can we go now? Like, we can go whenever you want, buddy." But really, you would have been buying them food anyways, so they just think this it's is all a your gift. money anyway. Yeah, it's like it's I brilliant. Guess yeah. The the slight mm-hmm. gift here is they kind of can say, "Let's go there now." Yes, I I have the money, mm-hmm. and then you'll like have to take them. Mm-hmm. But that's minor. Yeah, you can give them like this is saving twenty-five dollars because mm-hmm. you're still going to be buying the noodles. A sharp kid may catch on to this, and hopefully, no kids are watching this Once for they, many reasons. If they but. catch on, then you have just run. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you drop just, off the orphanage just to run away. <laughs> that's all I got, though, and that's not that doesn't help me yeah. from the gifts I need to get. What do you got? Well, gift, you know, I'm getting my parents gift cards because that's all I can give my parents, even though it's this <laughs> awful, stupid gift. It's it's idiotic. I hate giving gift cards to my parents because it's just like giving them cash, and mm-hmm. they have more cash than I do, so mm-hmm. it's like I'm just really doing a stupid thing. But mm-hmm. if I give them a thoughtful gift, my mom shits all over it. Mm-hmm. My dad tells me to take it back, so that's no good. So gift card, I mean, home, my dad loves Home Depot, my mom loves CJ Maxx, mm-hmm. that's where I gotta go. You know what I've been doing, actually, with parents and, uh, excuse me, with grandma, is I take them to an event, like, I take my parents out to eat, <clears throat> like, I pay for it, and then they get to spend time with me, they like that, uh, that's kind of a fun time, and grandma, like, we, I've gone to the orchestra, or we go out to eat with her or something. That's nice. That's kind of a good one. I don't know, would your parents, would they like that or not? No. No? I can't imagine them liking that. Okay. Yeah, it's rough, man. It's rough. Uh, m- magazine subscriptions, I found, is a pretty good gift. You find a friend of yours who likes he likes something. You know, you give him a magazine that is up his alley. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, you would probably like uh, the scientific, science one. Sure. You know, I forgot what it's even called. There's, There's a lot of scientific, them. Scientific American. Scientific American, that's what that's, I'm thinking of. That's one, sure. Yeah, like, I get you. I just get you that, you know, subscription. I you What I would do then is I'd buy an issue... Mm-hmm. like now mm-hmm. buy the December issue and give it to them <clears throat> as a gift mm-hmm. and then in it is like a card that says one year subscription to mm-hmm. so then every month they'll get it because they, they get it every month so it's like a lot of there's a lot of value there mm-hmm. and I like getting magazines it's it's nice to read something you know mm-hmm. you get any magazines you like Economist I don't get that anymore they they split off the digital and the um, print subscription so I just get the digital because I can read it wherever I am. That's all you it's, need. It's more convenient. You don't yeah. like paper? I do like paper, but it's not worth paying for both. If I had to choose one, that's I just dumb of them. Eh, not really. But they are the economists, so they probably got to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Sounds like a fucking dick move to me, though. It was a surprise. I had no warning. Remember Card Player magazine? Yeah, I would subscribe to that. I don't know if it's still around. I like I like reading. They just shit. Give, it, give it for free. It. The casino, right? Yeah, I used to, but I'm not going to go over there. I'd rather have it delivered to my house. You're still trying to push this you like cards thing? Still, still I still like the thought of it. I like the theory. Right. I mean, I like it. All right, so 
anyways, gifts. Let's just go. So, Dad, Home Depot gift card. Uh, bottles of alcohol are good gifts. Huh, yeah. Booze is good. Yeah. Everybody needs it. It's like giving people getting people shit they're gonna buy anyway. Mm -hmm. But like you know, just get a little top shelf and go. Here's a bottle of really great vodka. Toilet paper. I don't know about that. They're gonna buy it anyways, though. Well, it's got a yeah. It's, it's got, got be a, it's got humor value. It's got to be a it's got to be a luxury <laughs> item. It is a very practical gift though. <laughs> But yeah, you know what? Tell us your gift ideas because I'm curious uh, for my own self. Yeah, actually, please tell us your gift ideas because I have not shopped for anyone and I need some gift ideas. Yeah. So anyway, that was kind of a bad topic I picked because I had nothing prepared. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I don't know why I even wrote that on here. I thought <laughs> I could talk about it, but it's it sucks. There's It sucks. I got a bunch of t-shirts that people care about. Like, I like graphic t-shirts a lot like this one I'm wearing today. I love shirts that this are fun. This gives ideas for you. For me, but I, I, I impose my beliefs on other people. I like shirts. They must like shirts, too. Why wouldn't they? They're freaks. Yeah. You know, uh, let me talk about a little bit about Loot Crate and Nerd Block. You know these things? So, yeah. like, monthly subscription services to, like, a, a box of toys for nerds. And I did. I have reviews of both of them on my site, whatever. I don't like either one. I thought the value was not there. But they uh, give you a shirt in the box. So, basically, you're paying $30 a month for a, a, a random shirt, geek really, a geek shirt, and then a bunch of stupid toys that you might as well throw in the trash. <laughs> the shirt I love. I got four of the shirts, and I, I I look forward to getting them, and I love them. But I'm not paying $30 a month for a shirt. I can buy myself a shirt every month for $10, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be a great idea to come up with like a Secret Santa process with my friends where we all sign up for like a Google Doc, and it's mm -hmm. random. And every month, we shuffle, and you get me, and I get, you know, MASH, and then MASH gets Ditch, and Dish gets you, and then we all have to get each other shirts that month. And the... And the, oh, the, the... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what? I sneezed. That was it? Oh, I thought you, you, were, I thought you were going to say something, and then you sneezed instead. Oh, no. Yeah, so, the price range is $15 to $20, and everybody gets everybody a shirt they care about, and you're paying a lot. You're paying less than $30 a month, and you're still getting a random shirt gift. Uh, yeah, I've heard you say this idea before. And why do you think it's such a bad idea? Uh, well, what are... how? So, I get... I get uh, Mash. Yeah. How do I know what shirt to get him? I just have to. You know Mash. I have to guess. You you don't you know him. You don't I, need to guess. You give him a fucking guitar, fucking hard ass playing guitar shirt. <laughs> he loves that shit. Guitar strings or some kind of a note, like a cool musical note, like that spirally one. You know the one. Yeah. A big like bass key, like whatever. You give him one of those things, and he's like, "Oh, cool, bro, cool shirt." Like. <laughs> he loves that shit, and then he gives you a shirt like with you know a fucking weird creepy face on it or piano keys or whatever the fuck. <laughs> And you love that shirt too, yeah. and you're wearing it all the time. And you give me a shirt with Mario on it, with sunglasses on it, or some stupid crap, and I geek out. See, I think, I don't know. I guess I like. Shirts. What do you think? I, I like t-shirt. I like graphic tees quite a bit less than you, I'd say. I guess. So like, I have limited times in my life. What do you lounge in? Wearing what do you lounge in at home? My. Uh, Not this nice fucking well, shirt. Well, I want. Well, I, I want to get a tracksuit. I don't have one yet, but they look really comfortable. So. That well, was what I would. But like. until then, then what? Sweatpants and a. Uh, and uh, my house is very cold, so I usually wear like four layers of shirts. So all sorts of sh all sorts of stuff like. So you need more shirts, is what you're saying? Well, I need. You can't wearing four I at a time. I need sweatshirts. T-shirts do me no good. And in the summer, <sighs> even if they're in the summer, I'm not going to wear some graphic tee to work. So I have. Why? You're a developer. Yeah, I just I, sometimes I wear a t-shirt. I don't know. I I don't like graphic tees. Look, you don't like them. That's fine. There's some people who like them, and I think that's a good idea. Because a shirt is the best part of the nerd block, and they're wasting it by putting all the stupid crap in there. I just want a shirt every month. That's a geek shirt. There's probably one of those blocks. Shirt block. I need a shirt block that's <clears throat> just a shirt. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be video game things, computer things, and Jean-Claude Van Damme things. <laughs> and that's what I need to be in there. And I love that. My ideal shirt block. All right, let's go to picks. You want to go to picks? Yeah, picks. I got a lot of picks. First, let me... A couple plugs. They're picks, but they're also plugs. First, right now on my website on Facebook, Facebook slash Agree Die, I'm doing a giveaway for <clears> some <throat> uh, neckties. If you show me uh, your best... Uh, I believe it's an Eldridge I'm doing. You show me a picture of an Eldridge knot, you post it in my Facebook page. You can win a free tie from the Dark Knot. It's like a $60 value. It's a good deal. 
All you gotta do is post a picture? All you do is post a picture, and you gotta win. But, like, all you do is post a picture to enter, and then the owner of the Dark Knot himself is gonna pick the winners. There's gonna be three winners. Oh, okay. And all the winners get a free tie. So I am eligible. Absolutely. Okay. You say, take a, to do an Eldritch Knot, take a picture, put it in, after it, the, the deadline's December 25th. And then he'll pick three winners, and those three winners get a free $60 tie. Hmm. That's easy money. Or easy tie, I should say. There's no money. But so check out my Facebook page do that. Now, there's another website called edity.com. There'll be a link in my description. They uh, One of the first uh, Thai websites that I kind of showcased when I did my knots, they have these uh, detachable tail ends, so you can change the color of your uh, cool knots. It's a cool brand. They do this, like, you know, they're really made for uh, contrast knots. And they've been out of commission for a while. They ran out of stock, and they've kind of just faded away for, like, a year, I feel like. But they just emailed me. They're back up and running. So if you're looking for cool contrast knots, check out edity.com. I think it's $30 a tie. But uh, they are they have a detachable tails. It's really awesome. Why is that a plug? You just like the company? I like, Yeah, they're you, they, because they, I, I was a big fan. I plugged them, and then people kept asking me, they're out of stock. Are they ever going to get more stock? I, I don't know. But they did get more stock, so they're back. So check them out. I'll have a link. There'll be a link. Why don't you give me a, a pick? Uh, okay, so my number one pick is uh, I'm a computer programmer for my job, and if you're into like synthesizers or uh, generating audio with a computer, there's this program called Super Collider, which has been around for quite some time. Um, you can make some very bizarre sounds, and it's uh, pretty easy to get a functioning program going. Can it's, make bizarre uh, sounds. Can make bizarre sounds, like very, very unique bizarre sounds. It's mm -hmm. I've been having a lot of fun. Uh, playing around with this, so it's called Super Collider. It's for all platforms. Can you send me a clip of bizarre sounds that I can plug in here? Yeah. Can you record just some bizarre sounds and mm -hmm. just send me like a, a five, six second thing? Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. And I'll plug it in here. Yep. What else you got? Uh, another one, iPhone 6 slow motion camera. Now, the new iPhone 6 has a 24, 240 frame per second video, which is eight times faster than normal 30, 30 frame per second video. So what that means is you can take a video of something falling <clears throat> and it's slowed down at 1 8th speed, but it's smooth, which is really cool. Some people have told me that some Android phones have this too. I haven't heard, I've heard 120 frames per second, um, which is not quite as good, but I've made, it's really fun. If you have an iPhone 6, go to the camera and go to slow-mo and like just drop something. It's cool. Like maybe you could find something, you know, it's free with your iPhone You know what 6. the rub is? The rub? With this? Yeah, you, the, you can't upload you it to can't, Facebook easily. You can't get... Well, you can upload it to Facebook, but what happens then is Facebook uh, makes it look like shit. Mm -hmm. If you want to get the good video off your phone, you seemingly cannot do it. I can't believe that. I, I, I can't either. But what happens is if you, if you take the video off your phone, like in the traditional way, mm -hmm. it's a QuickTime movie mm -hmm. with a filter on it. Like, QuickTime is applying the, a filter of slow motion, mm -hmm. but the video itself doesn't have it. Like, if you upload the video to YouTube, it's just normal speed. Yeah, see, you got to use a better program, I, I think. Better program I, than what? Uh, well, I don't know. You're saying, oh, you upload it directly from. I'm the saying if I, if I, to yeah, if I pull the video out, it becomes, <laughs> it's an MP4. That's what iPhone gives what you. If, well, what if you go straight from your phone to YouTube? I've never done that. I bet that because I've seen ones, I've seen slow mo videos that say iPhone six on YouTube that are definitely sm slow and smooth. Then the question is, if I took my video on a different iPhone that doesn't have, you know, a YouTube connection. Mm -hmm. How do I get that video on my iPhone so I can? Or if you want to edit it. I mean, if you want to edit it, you can't just upload it to YouTube. Right. There has to be a way. If you know a way, please tell us in the comments tell us about how it. to actually get it out. I'm pissed off about it. I don't it. really believe Alex. I think there's a... I tried. I got that yeah. cool video on my, my ping pong serve. It's money. Mm -hmm. And I can't even get it in the full red. Like, I have a shitty Facebook version, but it, yeah. it looks like crap. It's like 640. It's garbage. All right. Uh, I'm back on my fitness pal. That's my pick right now. Uh, my, my fitness pal is in a mobile app that uh, it, it basically it doesn't it's a diary it's nothing but what it is is <laughs> you, you go in there and you tell it what food you ate and it does a pretty good job of being able to find your food and know how many calories are in it uh -huh. so you can measure your calorie intake per day okay so you say like breakfast burrito meal McDonald's like yes lunch two Big Macs yep dinner and, and, and the, the, the beauty of it is it's crowdsourced and people actually put in the information so like the, it, uh. when you say Big Mac from McDonald's it knows how many calories that is mm -hmm. and it knows how many calories a swans and deep fried chicken dinner is and it knows what you know a can of beans is so you actually very accurately can put in what you ate and how, the quantity of it and it'll mm -hmm. tell you how many calories you consumed and you can set a goal and it graphs your progress and you can say I want to eat 2,000 calories a day or in my case I want to eat 1,200 calories a day 
I ate at least twice that much at dinner today by it myself. So I'm shitting the bed. Was it that much? I ate like six tacos, I think. Really? I think so. Wow. That's probably like, it's probably 12, 1,200 calories hmm. just for dinner. And I also had lunch. Hmm. So I'm way over. But uh, yeah, it, it really, the reason it, it, it's good is because it forces you to see how much food is worth. Mm-hmm. For example, a, a, a bean taco is like 280 calories or so. Okay? A chocolate chip cookie is like 160. You know what I'm saying? So like when I have one cookie, that's like a shitload of calories that I don't need to have. You know, like when I'm eating lunch, I eat lunch, right? Like that's a... Mm -hmm. Like if I eat four tacos, that's like 600 some calories, whatever. But if I eat three cookies, that's 500 calories. Mm -hmm. Like that's a whole dinner I had for three goddamn cookies and it didn't do anything for me, you know? So whenever I look at a candy or a cookie, I'm always thinking about when I put that on my fitness pal, I'm going to really hate myself. And because of that, it really is like a mental block for eating uh-huh. junk food and shit. Like, hmm. I don't eat donuts. I don't eat cookies when I'm on my fitness pal because a donut's like 200 calories on its own. Is it free, the app? Free. Cool. There's a bunch of features. It, it links with uh, Fitbit. So if you wear a Fitbit, it can link up with fitness pal and it'll subtract calories while you walk mm-hmm. automatically. It, it's got a bunch of, it's a whole thing. But I really only use it as a food journal. But in that, in that, it really helps me a lot just in that small function. Hmm. Recommend it. If you have a smartphone, which you do, <clears throat> get it get it and try it here's an idea I just had when you said that totally off topic go how about a scale you put underneath your mattress in your box spring so it weighs you every single day ideally accurately think that's possible a scale cause I don't want to buy a scale like I don't want to step on a scale I guess what's, that's stupid <laughs> well I like the idea of it automatically <clears throat> weighing you without you having to do anything what I would yeah. say to that is Put your scale right in front of your sink where you brush your teeth and do your morning routine. Mm-hmm. And then if that scale would automatically just like know you're on it and then track your weight without having you do anything. So you just mm-hmm. stand on it to brush your teeth. And during mm-hmm. that time, you're like, doom, got ya. And then mm-hmm. you can go to the website and the website will say, here's your like your graph of your weight every day. And then you mm-hmm. can see it without you having to really be intentional about it at all. I think mm-hmm. that would be really nice. Or like the floor itself, like one thing in the floor would just know mm-hmm. it's coming. But yeah, scale on your right where you brush your teeth. That's a good idea. Because you're automatically on it every morning. You remember. That'll snap you out of your bullshit real quick. Gaining weight. Eating cookies and shit. Eating donuts all the time. You can't be eating donuts. No. The sad truth is that the better something tastes, like, the worse it is for you, pretty much. That's, that's pretty fair. It's, that's true, man. It's rough. It sucks. You can find some things that taste very good that are fine, but... What what are, what are large. things that taste the best that are actually not bad for you at all? Like beef is pretty good, like a steak. Beef, yes, yeah, steak. Like a, isn't that bad for you? I don't know. I don't know. Only if it's a lean cut of meat, it's not really bad for you. Really, it doesn't have a lot of like fat or something. It got some fat, but it's not a lot. If you like cut the fat off, you just get the meat. I would think like a sauteed mushroom is really fucking great. I love it. Mm-hmm. Like I would just eat a mushroom and love it. Mm-hmm. It was just it was sauteed. You know, like a raw mushroom, I eat it, but it's not delicious. You know, it's fine. Mm-hmm. When you saute it and get that wiltiness, yeah. love that flavor. You bite it, it's that crispy little, not crispy, a little crunchy sponginess that it's got, like that gelatin, kind of like, love that sound yeah. it makes when you crush it. <clears throat> uh, where are we? What are we doing? We're just off on a total tangent. Just going off. Uh, there's, um... <laughs> Easter egg? Is this an Easter egg? No, it will. Uh, this? this is uh, this is <laughs> this is an uh, iOS app I want to talk about, but I a new one took over. There's this a game I found called The Firm, and it's free for a limited time. I don't know if it's still gonna be free. It's on iOS. I don't know if it's on Android. It's called The Firm, and it's a quick like Twitch game. If you play like Flappy Bird or Timberman, if you play these games, you're like just Fruit Ninja. Uh, no, it's not like Fruit Ninja. No, Fruit Ninja is not about making snap decisions. No. Oh. And actually, Flappy Bird's not a good example either. That's a bad example. Timberman's a good example. Where you pick right or left, right or left. That's you got to pick really fast. Right or left. That's what you're doing. That's what this game is. So you're a stockbroker, and you're either buying or selling stock. And then there's, like, parameters of what stock to buy and sell. And you got to really quickly, it's color and an arrow. So it's a green up arrow or a red down arrow. Or something it's a red up arrow or a green down arrow. And you got to, like, know what to do with each one. Either throw it to the right or the left. Why would there be a red up arrow? That's a, a bad stock increasing in price. I don't know what that means. Okay. It's just a game mechanic. It's okay. So if a red stock is going down in price, mm-hmm. you want to buy it. Mm-hmm. If a red stock is going up in price, you want to sell it. 
And then if a green stock is going up in price, you want to buy it. And if a green stock is going down, you want to sell it in this game. So it's just opposite. Green and red are just opposite orientations. Mm-hmm. And they come up at a random, and you got to, like, swipe them real fast. And it climbs up like a Tetris game. You know, mm-hmm. it climbs up, they fall, and you got to, like, shh, shh. And then if you touch the top, you lose. And then mm-hmm. the best part, when you lose, your broker jumps out of the building and commits suicide. Whoa. And then he falls on the pavement, and he's dead there on the pavement. And then there's a whole line of, like, people applying for the job, which is going into this building to be stockbrokers. Wow. And you say, new broker. And then you get a new broker, and you play it again. And then he jumps out of the window and dies, and it's you get dark. a new broker. Yeah, it is dark. It's I'm weird. I'm surprised they let them. That's kind of a... It's a weird app. Apple would usually not allow yeah, something I like that. That's, I mean, that's kind of insensitive. Or yeah, it's a weird thing. Inappropriate. It's something. Something's wrong with it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Was it paid? No, it's free okay. currently. I don't know if it's always free or not, but it's free now. Okay. I, I found it because it's like, this game is free today. I'm not sure if it's going to be free for a week or whatever, but... Now, while we're talking about free, this is something I want to tell you about. There's a website called ShermanCarter.com, which is... Uh, I'll put in. I don't, I've don't. i never heard of this site before. I don't know what they're doing, but they sell uh, clothes. And I find them on Facebook because I'm a big fan of these weird Korean sweaters. I found these things about three years ago. I bought this Korean sweater, and it looks really awesome. It's f- sweet. You might have seen me tweet about them a few times. But I, I always check in prices on them, and they're always like $25 shipping. That's the problem with these sweaters. They're like 25 bucks for the sweater, but then the shipping is another $25, and it doesn't get any less if you buy more things. You pay shipping per item, always. It's really annoying. So this thing popped up on my Facebook, and it's like, buy this sweater now for $23. And I'm like, okay, I'll click. So I clicked on it, and it went to this website, ShermanCarter.com. And it's my sweater that I want for $29.99, free shipping, and there's a big red clock going Cyber Monday, last chance, like only three hours left. And it's a big red clock ticking down, three hours left. And it's 7 a.m. I, this is before I go to work. I'm like looking at my, my sites. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I got to buy this now. I got to buy this sweater. This is the best price I've ever seen. So I bought four sweaters. Okay. $120 on sweaters. I bought them all because <laughs> I, I couldn't, three hours only. <laughs> then I went to work, got to work. I look at the top. There's two hours left. I tell everybody at work, like, you got to buy these sweaters. Time's running out. They're such a good deal. I told a bunch of people at work about it. I don't know if they bought them or not. You know, whatever. They at least looked. I didn't. They at least looked. Then I checked back, like, at noon, and the clock just reset. Like, the, the, the timer was fake. It's like an old trick. Like, didn't you ever watch, like, QVC, where they have the tick-down timer on the, the home shopping channel all the time? Yeah, every single thing they have, they have a countdown timer. Like, this deal expires and whatever. Like, deal doesn't expire. Like, they have millions of these shitty necklaces. Like, it's just the... Uh, it's, it's an old trick. You know what? Yeah, it's an old trick. Yeah, and uh, even on... Uh, I they, never watched QVC. They have this on Amazon, but on Amazon, I actually believe it, but it says how many are remaining. Like, if you get yeah. kind of more obscure... Limited thing, quantity. I actually kind of believe that, because I feel like, you know, sometimes you look at the different variations, like uh, shoes. I just bought some shoes, and they show different numbers, so... I kind of believe that, but I mean, it's at definitely, the same time, a little bit. You're not. right. It's definitely an old hat. Like, yeah. quantity is limited. Get them while yeah. they last. It's the same trick, mm-hmm. for sure. But it's that physically ticking clock. And yeah, mm-hmm. maybe QVC is the same thing, but I don't watch QVC. You know, mm-hmm. like, that's... The thing about QVC is, is you expect them to get you because mm-hmm. you're watching QVC. Like, you're, like, looking at ads, pretty much. You don't expect a website to get you? One that's well, I do, but, I like, a Facebook ad that's, like, Cyber Monday, Last Chance, like, that, all that is believable to me. I'm not, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's an ad and it's a sale, but it's, like, I mean, the thing is, I didn't get ripped off because that is a good price for the sweaters. Like, I did not get ripped off in any way. I, I've been looking at these sweaters for years. This is the best price I've ever seen. But the fact is, the fact is, if there was not that timer... I would have bookmarked the site, uh-huh. and I would have waited for Christmas to be over. I would have let the holiday spending settle. I would have waited for a time where I can comfortably spend $120 on sweaters. I would not have recommended it to my friends and told them to hurry up. you got to act now within <laughs> two hours. I would not have done any of that. I would have just silently bookmarked the site and go, that's a good price. I'll check on it later when I'm ready. But instead, I, I, I impulse bought four sweaters. <laughs> so that's a fucking success for these guys. Yeah. I, I, I was awesome. This is the best like scheme since the guy who invented 99 cents. He got me right there. That timer got me, and I don't feel bad about it. What That's, do you mean by invented 99 cents? Well, because somebody had to come up with, like, things are a dollar, and the guy's like, how about we make it 99 cents? Or instead of $2, we make it one ninety nine. Mm. And then he made that happen, and that is a great effect on him. And, like, if somebody's a dollar and 99 cents, like, the amount of people that, I mean, it's, it makes sense. I, I, I would like to see a comparison, actually, of, like, something that's $1 mm-hmm. and something that's one ninety nine, mm-hmm. and then something that's 2 
and then see like how many people buy of those things and see what the disparity is. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what it is, but I know that 99 cents definitely like is a huge deal in retail. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. somebody came up with that. Everything you know? ends 99. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good. It's a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody had to do that. Like, there's a time where you could see like old things like. Things are a dollar, you know, things are 50 cents mm-hmm. and things are not 49 cents. <clears throat> some genius said, go, you know what, 49 cents, 99 cents. Mm-hmm. And then some not so clever guy decided to go 98 cents. And he's a real piece of shit. <laughs> they do do that. Sometimes 95. Restaurants do 95. Yeah, 95. They like, they're like pennies. Oh, yeah, that is. I don't know. Who pays maybe. in cash, though? No, plus, there's, not, not plus there's tax. Nobody now. There is tax. That's like, what is it? You ever see the gas prices where they're. One, like 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 fractions five ninety nine ninety nine yeah I do not quite understand that or five ninety nine nine <laughs> like like what the fuck it is, is a, it this? is a fraction I don't understand this yeah yeah walk up only gas stations do it if you know this in the comments I really Get actually want to know this nobody fucking knows listen to this podcast come on somebody will send a link somebody, somebody send me a link somebody knows I'll be impressed you send me a link what are you, you I mean, say, so I guess we can Google it ourselves what are you saying about the intelligence of the people listening to your podcast uh, that's not I mean that's not what I'm saying I mean I'm I'm the smartest person I know. And I don't know what the fuck. You're the is. smartest person you know. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you don't know. All, all right, look, shit. we're. Uh, we want to know, basically. I, I do want to know. know. Like, yeah. where do they? It's not like I mean, I get how it works. I wonder where they get the fucking balls. That's what I want to know. Like, mm-hmm. gas stations are like, you know what? Rules don't apply to us. Fuck a penny. We're gonna go to a tenth of a penny and sh- and, and fuck with people even more. Is that even? I mean, there's no rule for that. I think you could you could charge fractions of pennies if you wanted. And just round up in the end. I what guess you can. I mean, they're yeah. doing it. What do they get? Like a special yeah. permission? I it's wouldn't. an asshole move, is what it is. Why? Because, because it makes it seem cheaper. Same idea as ninety nine cents versus. It is the same idea as ninety nine cents, but the penny, like, like, how can people? It honestly should be illegal. This should it should be illegal. You can't make up a tenth <clears throat> of a penny. How am I supposed to? What if I buy one gallon of gas only, mm-hmm. and I demand my change? Yeah, you can't. Give me my one tenth of a penny, bitch. What are you gonna, What are they gonna do then? I wonder. I want to know what the point is, to make just to make it seem more appealing. I guess I'm gonna fucking do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna. Fi- I'm gonna go find a gas station, get exactly one gallon of gas, and then tell them where's my tenth of a penny, motherfucker, and I'll record that experience. And I'm gonna say, "Fuck you." You caught with your pants down right now. What if you? they actually had a coin you never even heard of? It? They can't actual, have a coin. Actual tenth of a penny, and they actually give it to you. No, well, sh- then I'll just then I'll, sh- <laughs> then I'll shrug it. Nobody's and go, ever heard of it. <laughs> then they'll be accepting my. Sure things are like secret drawer. That's that's. <laughs> I mean, they don't have such a, such a coin. No, they don't. They don't. So <clears> if <throat> they, I mean, what do I do then? Go to the Better Business Bureau. What the hell's going on there? <clears throat> it's bullshit. They can't do that. It's not that bad. It's confused. It's perplexing. Yeah. Well, over a lifetime, how much money do you think it costs you? It's a penny. It's it, I mean, it's a penny every time you go. That's no, it's a penny at. every... It's probably a penny about every t- five to ten gallons you buy. But they're so, ra- so, so, so two pennies every Although, time actually, they're rounding up every single time, aren't they? I'm sure those they're, 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 I'm sure those fucks. Oh, are they're definitely every rounding up well, every time. They almost have a good question. Then. I bet over. I bet in a year it's a couple bucks. Yeah, well, probably. I want my couple bucks back every year. Yeah. That's Class true. action lawsuit. Holiday. Yeah. I'm coming for your ass. Holiday gas station. What's that gas station with the fucking dinosaur on it? You know the one. Yeah. Are they gone? I have not seen Sinclair. Oh. Well, fuck those guys too, <laughs> man. Sinclair. All right. Well, you know that was a twentieth. The twentieth podcast. Yuri missed. Mm. Yuri missed the 20th annual podcast. Well, at least there was another celebration in my first, you know? It's your first? I've never been on any kind of a podcast. I don't my understand 20th. what all this stuff is, all these equipments. Yeah, all this it microphones. Conf- confuses me. Cameras. I don't know where I'm supposed to be talking or what I'm supposed to be saying. So, okay, everybody, I want to put up a vote. Who do you like better as a, as a co-host? <laughs> Adam or Yuri? Let's get a vote going and just say uh, Adam or Yuri in the... In the, in the uh, Yuri 2015 or Adam 2015. We'll do it that way and we'll see what happens. We'll see where the chips fall. You know, it's a democracy we're living in. Vote Adam. There you go. Thanks for coming. Podcast 20 in the books. <laughs> <laughs>